On today's Locked on Giants podcast, General Manager Joe Shane held his draft preview press conference. What did he have to say? More importantly, what can we take away from what he had to say? I've got the key points as well as some analysis coming your way next on the Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked On Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of the Locked On Giants podcast is brought to you by Monopoly Gold. I admit it, I have a competitive side, and it's a big fan of Monopoly Gold. The mobile hit twist on a classic Monopoly, so go join your friends and download Monopoly Go now for free on the App Store or on Google Play. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked on Giants podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast family, your team every day. I'm your host, Patricia Trana, credential member of the New York Giants media for Locked on as well as for Giants country over on the Fan Nation Network, SI.com. And welcome to my Blue Crew community members, my newcomers, my everydayers, and everybody in between. You're all appreciated and loved by yours truly. If this is your first time watching the Locked on Giants podcast, and you haven't subscribed yet to the YouTube channel, please take a moment to do so. Click the little bell for notifications every time I post a new video. And of course, like the video if you wouldn't mind. It all helps us tremendously because we just can't have the Cowboys beating the Giants podcast. I'm sorry, just can't happen. So anyway, <laughs> um, on today's Locked on Giants podcast, General Manager Joe Shane did hold his presser with the uh, the media on Thursday. Um, didn't really give a whole lot out, which we kind of expected, but there were some takeaways that uh, I wrote down that caught my ear. And I'm going to talk about some of what he had to say and kind of go, not just reiterate it, but go into a little bit more detail as to what it potentially means. So we're going to kick things off with um, what he had to say about the quarterbacks, then we're going to transition to the receivers. And then I've got some miscellaneous uh, nuggets that I picked up. And then I'm going to give you a little bonus. And that is, what is my gut feeling after listening to Shane as to what they will probably do? I'm going to take a guess here um, as to what I think they're going to do on day one, day two, and so forth. And uh, I'll give you that at the end of the podcast. So you'll have to stick around if you want to hear that. So again, thank you for jump jumping in with us. Uh, let's start. Okay, so Shane spoke for about a half hour in the auditorium. And by the way, the auditorium is cool. They've got these new padded seats that are a lot wider uh, and a lot more comfortable. Just had to throw that out there. Uh, but anyway, uh, one of the things Shane talked about, obviously, was the quarterbacks in this draft class. And people were asking him things like, okay, what do you look for in a quarterback? You know, would you trade up? You know, that sort of things. And the thing that jumped out at me. Uh, there were a couple things, actually. He said that, you know, this is a deep quarterback class. The Giants, for, for what it's worth, I think have done more work on this quarterback's class. I think they've seen about, I want to say, six or seven quarterbacks, whereas a couple of years ago when the class was pretty deep, I think they only saw four. They really did work on four. So they did a lot of work on day one, day two prospects. But um, the thing that obviously kind of jumped out is that Shane said, hey, we don't necessarily have to add a quarterback. You know, I have faith or we have faith in Daniel Jones and Drew Locke and in Tommy DeVito. Now, I know what you're all thinking because I thought the same thing. What else is he going to say? No, I don't have faith in those guys. You know, and actions do speak louder than words. And again, Shane all along when it has come to Daniel Jones has said that the expectation is that Jones will be the starter. Keep saying expectation, not will be the starter, expectation. And that to me says that they're still kind of hedging their bets. You know, will Jones be ready? And if he's not ready, you know, will it be Locke or will it be another quarterback? But uh, Shane said, obviously, um, that they're comfortable there or they would be comfortable going into the season with, with Jones, uh, Locke, and Tommy DeVito. Folks, I'm not buying it. I don't know about you, but I'm not buying it. How can you be comfortable with Daniel Jones's injury history? 
Okay. If you're going to take guys off your board because they've got an injury history, how can you sit there and say that you're, you're going to be comfortable going into the season with just Daniel Jones, Drew Locke, and Tommy DeVito on your roster as, as your quarterbacks? I don't think you can, right? doesn't make sense to me. Now, you know, Drew Locke, as I've mentioned, you know, earlier in the week on past shows, I've mentioned how Drew Locke has to learn the system and he will, he'll be, he'll, he'll get up to speed. Tommy DeVito will see, you know, what kind of a leap he has taken from year one to year two. But for me, the big concern remains Daniel Jones and that injury history. Now I know I get emails from, uh, from listeners and readers. There's one in particular who keeps Every week sending me, we don't need a quarterback. We got Daniel Jones. We need this. We need that. I'm sorry. Daniel Jones's injury history is a problem. And for the Giants to bury their head in the sand and ignore that or not take that into consideration with this deep of a class, that would just be malpractice in my opinion. And I think it would be something that if Joe Shane were to ignore the position in the draft, I think that would come back to haunt him. I really do. So, you know, look, they're saying that, oh, we have confidence in Daniel and, the, and, and Drew and Tommy, but we'll find out in a week just how much confidence they have in this group. Because, look, if they take a quarterback in the first round, if they trade up to get a quarterback, which I don't think they're going to do, but if they take a quarterback in the first round somewhere, then that should tell you all you need to know about just how much confidence they really have. Actions, ladies and gentlemen, speak louder than words. And I am not convinced that the Giants are going to ignore taking quarterback in this draft. I just, I, I'd be stunned if that happened. All right. I don't think it'll necessarily be, you know, the first round, but I think a quarterback is coming in this class. Now, speaking of quarterbacks, you know, Shane was asked about the comments made by Rich Eisen during the combine in which Rich Eisen said that he had heard that the Giants had buyer's remorse over that contract for Daniel Jones, that, um, you know, that they were done with him and so on and so forth. And folks, you know, I don't know where Eisen got that from, you know, obviously he has his sources and the rule of thumb here with reporters is if, you know, you might know who your, your colleagues sources are, but you never disclose them. And then again, there are times when you don't know who their who their sources are or how valid their opinions are. But as you can imagine, Shane denied that, which again, what else was he going to say that? Yes, we have buyer's remorse. Yes. We're giving up on this guy. Now nah, he wasn't going to do that. You know, again, when it comes to the quarterbacks and especially Daniel Jones, action will speak the loudest over anything else that Joe Shane could possibly say or has said thus far this off season. So we will see just how much confidence he has in Daniel Jones, because obviously if they take a first round pick. I'd be shocked if that first round pick never sees the light of day. So if you're going to do that, you really can't carry Daniel Jones if he gets injured again or he regresses, continued, continues to regress. Um, they're going to have to make a decision. You know, so you let the kids sit for the year, which I do believe they would do. You let Jones and Locke do the heavy lifting, and then you see where you're at by the end of the year when it comes to the quarterback. All right, coming up next, we're going to talk a little bit about the receiver class which, by the way, has a link into what the Giants might do at quarterbacks. So don't go anywhere. We'll have that for you right after this. This show is sponsored by Yahoo Finance. Wouldn't it be great if you could see all your investment and retirement accounts in one place? With Yahoo Finance, you can consolidate your views from multiple accounts into one hub and access the expert analysis you need to tend to your entire portfolio with confidence. Whether you're a seasoned investor or are looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. They're the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at financial news cycles, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. Securely link your brokerage accounts for a unified view of your wealth, including 401k and other investments. 
A comprehensive perspective is what sets apart great investors. And it's how Yahoo Finance ensures that you have the insight to look at your wealth in its entirety. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor. YahooFinance.com, the number one financial destination. That's YahooFinance.com. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked On Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Trana, and I have a plan to get you at least one more podcast over the weekend. Normally, I don't do the podcasts on Saturday and Sunday, but it's draft week coming up. So, hey, we got a lot to cover still. I've got a lot of things on my to-do list before the draft uh, actually gets here. So I may drop another podcast for you, a full podcast. And then, of course, for my Blue Crew community members, the mailbag is open, and also I've got your mock draft results, so that's on my list of things to do. So lots of stuff coming your way. Hope you will keep it here on the Locked on Giants podcast. And again, thank you for tuning in. All right, let's get back to what Joe had to say. All right, now, on the surface, didn't have it much to say, you know, nothing groundbreaking that made you say, oh, wow, that's a, cl you know, a clue as to what he's going to do. But let's talk about the receivers, all right? Because I found some of his comments about the receiver class very interesting and potentially telling. As you guys know, this is a very, very deep receiver class. It is literally three to four rounds deep where you can find guys who not only can be, you know, contributors to your offense, but also with this new kickoff rule, you might be able to find some guys who can contribute on kickoffs, which is something to keep in mind when you're looking at, you know, the boards and how they fall and who the Giants might take. I, you know, I've said before, I wouldn't be stunned if the Giants double dipped in the receiver class. I don't think they will, but it wouldn't shock me if they did. All right, so let's talk about what Shane had to say. He said, and this is you know a direct quote from uh, Shane, I think it's a deep receivers class from top to bottom. Some wide receivers who can wear multiple hats, uh, just not just as a wide receiver, but as a returner. I think there will be several receivers taken in round one, end quote. All right, and he also admitted this a couple of years after kind of downplaying the whole idea of, uh, you know, wide receiver one, there's a lot sitting at home at the playoffs. He admitted that a wide receiver one can help an offense. Well, duh, we all knew that, right? So what can we take away from that? Folks, number one, I am 100% certain that the Giants are going to take a receiver in this draft, whether it be round one, round two, or whatever. They are going to take a receiver in this draft. I don't know exactly where. I can guess. And I think a lot of you know where I'm going to guess and who I would guess. But that's happening. Now, here's what's interesting about what Shane had to say. When he said, I think there will be several taken in round one. And he made the point of, it's a deep class from top to bottom. So now here's your situation. All right. So. We can all probably agree that the Giants, that it would behoove the Giants to take a quarterback. So if Shane feels that, hey, you know, this is such a deep receiver class that maybe I could punt the decision to take a receiver in, to day two or maybe even to day three. And now maybe I focus on getting my quarterback. Hmm. Does that change potentially what we all believe to be true? including yours truly, who believes that the Giants still go wide receiver in round one. Well, it's all obviously going to depend on how the board falls. You know, if, if um, I, Caleb Williams is going to go to the Bears, I think everybody knows that. The belief is that Jaden Daniels will probably go to uh, the Commanders. And then it's a question of what New England does. You know, does New England take, you know, a, a quarterback, you know, or Drake May or, you know, or maybe if Jaden Daniels doesn't go uh, to Washington, maybe they take him. Um, so it's it's all going to depend. Now, the interesting scenario is is what happens if JJ McCarthy is there? Do the Giants pounce on him? Shane wasn't giving up any clues as to what he looks for in a quarterback. The question that was one of the first questions asked in the presser. 
And it's a shame because I think a, a more detailed answer would have maybe given us a little hint as to who they like and who they don't like. So we have to kind of just look at the film and, uh, of these prospects and kind of figure out who the fit's going to be and, and whatnot. But um, you, you say to yourself, okay, look, if several receivers are going to go in the first round, might there be a quarterback that slides down? Maybe, you know, Drake May slides down to the Giants to, at six. Would Shane trade up? Possibly. I don't think he will because, again, he said that they have a lot of needs. He flat out said that they're not one or two players away. Uh, matter of fact, that was in response to a question I asked him about, you know, balancing how many get assets to give up given where the, the state of the roster. So with receiver, I think obviously they're going to pick one. Now I want to mention uh, the Darius Slayton situation, which I think I talked about yesterday, but I want to go into that a little bit more. Darius Slayton, for those of you who missed it, um, did not report to the start of the off season program, the voluntary off season program, by the way. Darius Slayton reportedly wants a contract extension. Shane was asked about that. And my takeaway is that Slayton's not getting it. It doesn't really help the Giants to do it at this point. And the reason for that is if we look at the money, all right, the Giants have already paid out a 2.6 million roster bonus to Slayton, which means that if they wanted to lower any number on his contract, it would be his 2.5 million base salary. Well, at this point, guess what? It just doesn't pay. It's kind of like the same situation the Giants were in last year with Xavier McKinney, where it didn't pay for them to extend him because it wouldn't have given them cap relief. It's the same situation now. Had the Giants done something with, with Slayton's contract before that roster bonus kicked in, then it would have made sense. Then it maybe would have saved them money. But look, the Giants, like I said, I'm pretty sure they're going to take a wide receiver. So if they do, where does that leave Slayton? You know, maybe the Giants want to move on with him, from him. Maybe they say, okay, you know what? Jalen Hyatt is a guy who we think can be our number two receiver. So Darius, we love you, but we're going to move on and let you move on. It's a possibility. So, you know, I, I when it comes to receivers, I still think, you know, that that's the way the Giants are going to go unless a quarterback slides down to them. All right. Now I'm curious to see if Shane does trade up again. I don't think he will, um, but stranger things have happened. And if he believes in a guy, obviously he'll do it. Um, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I know for sure that he's going to do it. I did not get that sense, but this is the time of year that GMs are playing poker. All right. They, they're, they're keeping their cards close to the vest and leaving it up for people to figure out what it is they intend to do. But here's the key takeaway, folks. The fact that Shane said that a wide receiver one can help out the offense, especially the offense that Dable and Mike Kafka have put together. If that doesn't tell you that receiver is on their to-do list, then I don't know what else will. So that much we can, we can draw a, a conclusion about. All right, now. Coming up next, I'd have some miscellaneous nuggets. Plus, I'm going to give you my best guess as to how this is all going to unfold for the Giants. Don't go anywhere. We'll have that right after this. Hey, Giant fans, we've all been there, either as a player or a fan. It's halftime and the scoreboard is not looking good. You're feeling low and you're not sure if you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep. Lift your head up and say to yourself, time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heists, and take as much as my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right. The smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly that you love, but on your phone, played anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. You can play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards. You can make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball and even charge other players rent for your iconic properties. 
You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra rewards and to climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put your game face on and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or on Google Play. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked On Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Trena, and busy day. You know, it's, it's heck, it's the start of a busy week. Draft is next week. That means the end of the mock draft season, thank goodness. Uh, that means uh, we will finally have some answers as to what the Giants, as well as the rest of the NFL community, is planning to unveil starting next Thursday night. Uh, and we, of course, here at the Locked On Giants podcast, I'll be in East Rutherford all three days. Um, I will have shows for you, bonus shows. I'll have uh, video shorts, all kinds of cool stuff. You will not want to miss it. So please make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Or if you listen on our audio channels, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything. All right. Now I want to talk about some miscellaneous um, nuggets that, that Shane had to say. Um, some of them we already know, but, uh, I'll just go, I'll go for, go over them all the same. Um, one thing I found really, really interesting is that Shane revealed that he has been getting an unexpectedly high number of calls from teams behind him in the draft order, looking to see if maybe there might be an interest in swinging a deal. Now here's, what's interesting to me. Shane has admitted that the roster has a lot more needs. All right. So I don't think he trades up for a quarterback, but I think if, you know, the, the top quarterbacks are off the board by the time, you know, they get down to the fifth or sixth pick or, or the sixth pick where the giants are at. Could the giants trade down, pick up some additional draft assets? You know what folks, I would not, uh, be surprised if, if that were to happen because think about it. The giants have six picks. They have a lot of needs, quarterback, receiver, cornerback, interior defensive line depth, tight end, maybe add another uh, offensive tackle, maybe add, you know, a, a, a edge rusher. They've got needs. Okay. They, they, and not, and I'm not talking just starter needs. I'm talking depth needs. So if you're Shane and you could pick up, you know, swap places, move down a few spots and pick up an extra draft pick or two to address some of those needs, even if one of those picks is in next year's draft, why wouldn't you? You know, if you get an, an extra draft pick and now if, if you pass on a particular position and you want to move up, now you've got some more capital to do that. So why wouldn't you take that approach if you're him? So that caught my, uh, or raised my antenna that he admitted that a lot of teams uh, behind him have called up more than he expected, actually called up and, and, you know, initiated some conversations. Now, nothing obviously is set in stone. Um, they'll continue to talk because Shane said that their draft board isn't set and won't be set probably until Friday night. And then they're going to take the weekend and just kind of sleep on everything so that they don't overanalyze everything. So that was interesting. Um, they also, he also mentioned, uh, that Evan Neal offensive tackle is progressing in his rehab from ankle surgery. I know some of you are like, yeah, who cares? But it's, it's significant. You know, I mean, they are, uh, seemingly locked into wanting to give Evan Neal another crack at that right tackle spot. And, you know, see if Carmen Brasillo can't work some magic with Evan Neal. All right. Darren Waller. I mean, you know. Nothing's really changed there. A lot of people, you know, know by now that Darren Waller is still trying to make up his mind. Folks, you know, I said this, I think, on yesterday's podcast. Or maybe, I know it said that at some point this week on the podcast. There's no rush that Darren Waller is going to be, you know, if he retires, which I believe he will, he will be a post-June 1st transaction. It will help the team financially. And it was on yesterday's show, by the way, I think I said – I laid out the finances. So if you get a chance, check out yesterday's show. I think it was segment three of yesterday's show in which I laid out how that's going to help neutralize the, uh, the $12 million injury um, concern that I think, or the injury clause that uh, Daniel Jones has in his contract. 
if he should get hurt again. So check out that segment again. Um, so Waller's still deciding, and that's not, you know, that has not stopped the Giants from, you know, adding to the roster at the position. It will not stop them from adding in the draft if a guy, you know, falls to them that they like. So don't worry about that. For those of you who are saying, oh, he's holding the money hostage. No, that's not the case. All right. Um, and then finally, um, I mentioned Darius Slayton. I don't think he's going to get his his contract uh, extended for the reasons I mentioned earlier in the program. But now let's talk about what I think is going to happen in this draft. Now, I have been dug in that the Giants will stay at six and they will draft one of those top receivers. I still say, if I had to put odds on it, that it is probably, I would say maybe a 75 to 80% chance that that's what will happen. After listening today to Shane, there is that possibility that they trade down to pick up more picks, given all the needs they have. I I am willing to, you know, to go on a limb here and say that there will be a trade made by the Giants in some way, shape, or form. I don't know what round. I, I would suspect uh, it'll be the first round. But we will, of course, see if that's indeed, you know, the, the situation has to be right. There has to be a willing trade partner. You know, we could sit here and speculate on trades all we want. However, we have to make sure that there is a trade partner. And that trade partner gives the Giants fair value and doesn't look to, you know, put them over a barrel, so to speak, especially if it's a trade up. So all that being said, folks, where are we in terms of what the Giants are going to do? We're going to find out. <laughs> um, anybody who sits here and sits here and tells you they know right now, they don't. I mean, now, will we start to hear things as we get a little closer like maybe the day before, that's when I usually start to hear stuff. And that's when I know my colleagues generally start to hear stuff and things start to clarify. So as I catch wind of stuff, I'll pass it along because I know a lot of you want to know. And those of you who don't want to know, you know, then sorry if I spoil it. So anyway, that is going to do it for us here on the Lockdown Giants podcast. And again, thank you for spending part of your day with us and make sure you keep it here. I'm going to have another episode for you, a bonus episode. Um, and we'll just keep on cranking out the content until we get to the draft and actually beyond the draft, because there's going to be a lot to talk about. And I've got a lot of stuff planned for you that I think you're going to like. So thank you folks. We'll see you tomorrow.